G'day, welcome back to Brewpig. Today I'm gonna show you the seedy underbelly of this big boat. In our lovely new galley, we have a bit of a hole in the ground down here. I'll show you where that dungeon leads to. If you're new to the channel, you may not know where this goes, but I will show you. It's a little secret hiding place that we put into Brewpig. You could call it the brig. Maybe that's where we're gonna keep people that misbehave. Who would know? This is Brewpig's coffer dam. So this physical space that I'm in is a part of survey requirement. In front of me on this side we've got diesel tanks and behind we've got water tanks. You can't physically have them against each other with just a bulkhead in between because if one leaks it's going to contaminate and cross contaminate the other. So by having this physical space it's basically a dam that if say the fuel tanks leak it comes into here and doesn't affect the water and vice versa. Um, it also allows us to control our valves which are under the floorboards here and also our uh, machinery to pump the water up to the top of the boat. So this is a real working space for Brewpig and it's located uh, basically underneath the studio on that side and behind me, uh, the Ford cabin. We're a Kiwi couple living in Australia who brought a 57 foot steel trawler after she sunk in a flood and was pulled from the sea. We're now bringing her back to life. We're on to the finishing jobs after working on her for the last six years to refit and get her ready for launch as soon as possible. Brewpig is rebuilt by us with volunteers funded by Patreons and viewers and we spend every cent we have to make sure that she's ready. She's fueled by veggie oil, diesel, solar and wind power to do research, projects and expeditions to remote places like Antarctica and the Northwest Passage. She'll be crewed by supporters from around the world. Welcome aboard. Today we're climbing into one of the hardest places to access on Brewpeg, our front fuel storage tanks. We need to get in there to finish off a bit of welding and also do some sandblasting on areas that we've welded previously that we need to coat with our special fuel paint. In order to get this hatch off, I've got a couple of um, small adjustment tools. Just going to see if what it's going to take to get it free. There's not a lot of room between the steel, which is part of the challenge. This is the edge, and you can see the white part here, that's the lid, it's basically painted steel. And then this part here is welded onto the bulkhead, and the gap in between is only about half a millimetre. That's what I'm trying to get the cold chisel into, into that gap there. It's a bit of a challenge because it keeps basically nipping the steel on, on this side, which it shouldn't. I should be aiming it better, basically. And um, yeah, plus this um, aircraft fuel tank sealant that we used is bloody amazing and it's just not letting go so yeah that's the challenge of getting this lid off now that we've got it open, this is what we're looking at. So there's some rust that we have to deal with in here. That was painted, but obviously not well enough. So we're going to be doing a fair bit of work in this part. But also, you see this here, there's a lot of rust just sitting there. It's because that stainless pipe you can see there, we cut it out from the floor and replaced it. And all that rust is actually from the old pipe. And there's another one right at the very front corner you might be able to see up there. Deal with that too. So, a bit more work in this one than we were hoping. A bit of water sitting in there. Yeah, a bit of work to do. We'll get there. That tank that I just showed you on this side is an oil storage tank. So it's our veggie oil storage um, area up here in front end of the boat. 
Um, we can't have mild steel touching oil, it oxidizes it, we can't use it as a fuel. So that's why these tanks are actually painted. Normally in a trawler like this, you'd never bother painting the inside of your fuel tanks because diesel's a natural rust preventer. Um, and you know, they'll last 50 odd years without any drama inside the tanks, so long as you just get in there every couple of years and clean them out. We cleaned uh, 90 litres of silt and rubbish out of each of these tanks, which is about what you'd get every three years on a trawler this size um, in these tanks. Uh, so 90 litres out of each side. Um, we sandblasted inside these tanks and then also painted them, so they've, they've been had a full work over. We do need to get in there on this one that I just showed you and clean up that rust. That's, that's not acceptable, we need to deal with that. Having them painted allows us to store our oil in the front end of brew pig ready to use. fuel tanks. There's six of these. This is the port forward oil storage tank. So you can see we've got baffles randomly spread out through this tank. A lot of people think these baffles are too small but I don't actually know. I've never had the boat in the water and this is 45 year old steel so I suspect they'll be fine. The other side of it is Brewpeg has lots of tanks that are relatively small for the size of the boat so the free surface effect isn't so much of an issue with this boat because Rather than having, say, one great big tank that holds, you know, 10,000 litres at a go, each tank is pretty small. Um, I think this one's 3,500 litres, maybe 4,000, something like that. Uh, so it's not a huge uh, weight in the size of Rupig, and it's also pretty well um, vertical, so we can keep the free surface effect quite manageable. One of the jobs we have to do in here is basically blast any bits of steel that have um, essentially rusted or have uh, been overheated when we're welding next to it. So there's parts of the floor and things like that and the deck above. This is the uh, editing studio that's right above me. And when we did the floor in that, we actually um, welded a few um, stainless pieces. You can sort of see it here. When we put those in, it's obviously killed the paint inside this tank. So we need to get in, sandblast that off and then repaint that. So people wonder how we can um, just breeze in and out of these tanks. And it comes down to maneuvering. Like most jobs on Brewpig, I like to tackle the hard job first. That was going to be the fuel tanks, or so I thought. The fuel tanks were held on by aircraft grade fuel tank sealant. The water tanks, however, are held on with Sika 291, a 50mm wide bead of Sika 291. It was one of those jobs that you just needed to stare at for a while and smash it quite a bit with a hammer. Have yourself a little bit of a breather when you're absolutely completely exhausted, and then come back after lunch and regroup with a new plan. GoPro, stop recording. In fairness, the tools only got bigger after lunch. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. It's starting to get a bit aroma filled in this area. Um, there's a lot of different paint, solvent free epoxy behind this wall and there's a fuel safe paint behind this wall. Um, they off gas for a while and because we've had no fuel or water in these tanks there's nothing really, it's just basically a big tank full of off gas paint. Um, so it's starting to get a bit oh, in this room. So gas mask and last job of the day, attack this side. Once I've got this hatch off I can knock off for the day. I want you here with me. Am I out of my mind? Or is this how it should be? You made me sing about love. Uh, 
So just tell me if I'm wrong But it feels like love Yeah, it feels like love Yeah! Can I pass the lid up? Okay. I'll see if I can lift it just by hand. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah. Cool. Don't stand under it. Yeah. I never stand under my own welds. Yeah. All right, I'll bring some sand around. Yep. Bang. Right, well, that's on the ground. <laughs> when I sailed down a power I'm out of town where the river runs a streak of brown All the shanty lasses I gathered around And with a row and a roar we'd make this sound With an upshay rises, upshay rises Upshay rises from the bed With an upshay rises, upshay rises Whiskey won't about the head Took a highborn lady for a whirl across the floor, a hair unfell. You I caught the wing beneath the girl when we awoke in the kitchen with the servant girl. With an upshay rises, upshay rises, upshay rises from the bed. With an upshay rises, upshay rises, whiskey worn about the head. The parson's daughter to the steps of a father's house Sins confess, drug a whole egg, wine and thought me blessed When I knelt at the altar, need the Sunday best The plan in these tanks, we needed to climb inside them and get the blaster onto the bare steel that I welded in quite a while ago However, it's a wee bit difficult to show you exactly what we're doing here Nevertheless, we did some blasting in various corners, including the roof, on all of the new stainless that was welded into this tank. I thought this job was going to be hard. I had kind of allowed in my head maybe 2-3 hours per tank. Wasn't anywhere near that, it was more like probably 20 minutes per tank. So what I thought I might get maybe one or two tanks done per day, I ended up getting all four of them done in an afternoon, which was awesome. So. Here you can kind of see blasting the closest part of the tank to the cofferdam. So turning the sand on, you can fire it straight in through the hatch and do what you need to do. That was actually the worst bit of this tank. And then as graceful as a duck climbing up an oiled ladder, I had to climb inside the tank. Once this port forward fuel storage tank was finished, we were into the port water tank. You can see there's some rust stains around the wall. This is around the entrance hatch that I'm getting into. This is where some of the Australian gymnastics team use to practice their graceful entries in and out of manoeuvres, as you can see here. What I needed to do in this tank was much simpler. I need to clean off mould and a few other sort of stains that have got their way into this tank. Basically hasn't been used for three years and it's just been sitting there. And some stagnant water has gone a bit gross. So we cleaned that off 
and obviously we had masks on because it's going to be pretty feral when you're water blasting that sort of stuff off. So we sandblast the paint using the sandblaster. So we don't take the paint off, but we pull the nozzle back about half a meter from the surface. And rather than being so aggressive that it rips the paint off, it basically sands it to a beautiful finish where you can actually put a, a coat of new paint over top. Um, where it does go down to rust and there's the actual problem, then we take that down to bare steel and we fix the problem, but we also get rid of any staining at the same time. I've had a slight shower because I don't know if you saw in those um, last few shots, I had a wee bit of stuff on me. Climb in these tanks now and we'll start getting them cleaned up. After a day, the sand dries and you're just left with dry sand everywhere, but it's pretty mucky. You've got to clean it out and the easiest way is with the hose. Every one of these fuel tanks has a drain at the bottom that we flush everything out from. I need to climb back down into these tanks. We've given them a clean out, so I'll show you what they come up like when we've had a bit of a hose out. What I do need to do though is start welding in some stainless brackets. When we replaced both filler pipes in both front fuel tanks, we had to make a couple of modifications. We changed the mild steel pipe out for stainless, but we never climbed into the tank and welded the very bottom of the pipe uh, rigid so it can flop around and that's not gonna work. So we need to get in there and make some stainless brackets and then weld them in. We're gonna be using TIG so that we don't spray rubbish all through the tanks. What we have is a piece of stainless pipe. You can see there that we welded in the patch. This is from a previous episode. That pipe extends right the way down the tank, right down into the very bottom of the pipe. As you can see there, it's a wee bit jiggly. So what we need to do is take some of this cardboard, scissors, and a marker pen, and I need to make a bracket that goes between that piece of sandblaster just there and the stainless pipe and that's going to help us to stiffen that up completely. Armed with our two templates, we can go and get some stainless on. Tank welding is inherently dangerous. You need to be really careful not to fill the tank up with argon. Argon is the gas that we use when we're welding. It's heavier than air, so it sinks to the very bottom. So you need to have a drain in the bottom of the tank, like we have here, and then a suction system, like we have here. This is just a simple way of basically draining any of the heavy argon out of the bottom of the tank, and fresh oxygen just comes in through the access port. And that's what we're left with, a nice simple bracket. One of the dangers of doing tank welding is quite literally forgetting that you're doing tank welding. Um, I moved from one, I'm naked, and I moved from one side to the other and completely forgot that if I start welding in here, I've got no ventilation, so the whole tank can fill up with argon. Um, Jess picked it up, I, I honestly forgot all about it, and that's one of the major things with tank welding is make sure you've got a second um, who is pretty much looking out for that sort of thing all the time. Um, that and it's impossible to weld without a second, pretty much, you know, like if I need to adjust, if I need to adjust the welder, there's no chance that I'm going to be able to get in and out of the tanks, you know, 30 times. Um, I need someone up the top to do that side of it. So thankfully she's probably just saved my life. The other really important thing about working with two people whenever you're doing like tank welding is the second person can have coffee ready so much faster than you can if you're doing it by yourself. Look at the show. Wow. Bloody hell. Yeah, awesome. Pretty chunky, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. I don't know, are they strong enough? <laughs> I reckon they'll do. <laughs> Introducing our yet to be made massively thick windows into our water tank so that we can keep a real good eye on how good our drinking water quality is on Brewpeg at all times.